Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. During the past five to seven years, I have continually heard rumors of Chemist Warehouse thinking, wanting to list or IPO on the ASX. These rumors have not let up during that time period. And then lo and behold, a uh, few trading days ago from when I'm recording this video on the 11th of December, 2023, Sigma Healthcare went into a trading halt in regards to a proposed material transaction. And then more rumors came out and probably rumors is not the right word because these rumors, as it turns out, were based off fact. And these rumors were about a reverse takeover of Sigma Healthcare by Chemist Warehouse Group. But it was not a reverse takeover. It was a merger between the two companies. Now, this is not a merger of equal when you look at the size of the two companies. Chemist Warehouse Group is by far the biggest of the two. But when you look at the new proposed management and directors, it's a 50-50 split. So in that regard, it is a merger of equals. And even though it's not being called a reverse takeover, I probably would classify it as a quasi-reverse takeover and a quasi-merger. So in this video today, I'm going to go through the investor presentation that Sigma Healthcare released in regards to this proposed merger. And I always have to say proposed because there is a scenario, a world where this proposed merger does not go through. Talk about that later in the video. And there are a few questions I want answered. Like the first main question is evaluation of the proposed merge company. There's other questions that I wanted answered. And a lot of my questions are answered in the investor presentation. Now, Sigma Healthcare not only released, released this investor presentation, they also released a 165-page uh, transformational merger and equity grazing document, which I have not gone through. They've also released Chemist Warehouse Group's last three financial statements. So we have four years of history now for Chemist Warehouse Group. So let's go back to the presentation and start going through some interesting things we have discovered about this merger, some things we have discovered about Chemist Warehouse Group. The first bit of really intriguing information was on this page six, which is just the details of the presenters in regards to this proposed merge company, because we have indication on who the proposed company CEO and managing director is going to be. And it's not who I thought it would be. I thought it would be Mario Verrocci, who is the co-founder, CEO, and managing director of Chemist Warehouse Group. But it looks like the CEO and managing director of the proposed merged company is the current CEO and managing director of Sigma Healthcare, Vikesh, and Ram Sunder. And just based off the six presenters here, three associated with Sigma Healthcare, three associated with Chemist Warehouse Group, and that tells me there's going to be a 50-50 split when it comes to the leadership of this new proposed merge company. So even though this transaction is being called a merger, effectively it's Sigma acquiring Chemist Warehouse Group via a scheme arrangement exchange for Sigma shares, and it's a lot of Sigma shares, and $700 million cash consideration. Now, $400 million of that is through an equity raising at about 70 cents, if I remember correctly. And we also have an indication of the different sizes between Chemist Warehouse Group and Sigma Healthcare, because in the end, if this proposed merger does go through, Chemist Warehouse Group shareholders, which I think there's about 200 of them, will hold 85.75% of the new proposed merge company, while Sigma shareholders were only owed 14.25%. And it's really interesting because straight away, as soon as I saw that, and based off the amount of shares, uh, Sigma already has. They have one point, about 1.1 billion shares on the issue. They're going to do a $400 million capital raising. So if you just times 400 by 0.7, oh, no, 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 400, sorry, 400 divided by 0.7, there's going to be divided by 0.7, there's going to be about 571 million new shares. So 1.6 billion shares. So if a Sigma shareholders only own 14.25%, we can divide one by zero, that's by 0 0.1425. 
So that means Chemist Warehouse Group's going to hold seven times more shares than Sigma Healthcare. If we don't know, there's going to be, there's already 1.1 billion shares on issue. They're raising about 571. So we'll say 1.6 billion shares. So we times seven by 1.6 billion, we get 11.2 billion shares. Yes, this new merge company is going to have 11.2 billion shares. Now, that might seem a lot, but we also, it might seem a lot, but there's other companies, big companies out there that have a lot of shares on issue. But more importantly, if we times 11.22 billion by, say, 70 cents, we sort of an indication of what the new merge company's valuation is going to be. So roughly about $8 billion. And I'm saying roughly right now because some of our numbers might be out by a little bit. So again, one of the most important questions I had is what the value of this new proposed company, merge company, is going to be. So roughly eight to say nine billion dollars. But there is some clarity later in the video in regards to the actual valuation. So just wait for that in a few moments. Now I've already mentioned that there is a scenario, a world where this proposed merger doesn't go through. And in fact, on page 12 of the presentation in the key conditions and approvals, we see that there are a number of conditions in regards to this proposed merger. For instance, we need, or this proposed merger needs, ACC and OIO approvals, approval of the proposed merger by the requis requisite majorities of CWG shareholders, court approval of the scheme in accordance with the Corporations Act, and Sigma shareholder approval as well. And not to mention, neither company being affected by material adverse change or prescribed occurrence and other customary conditions. So there is definitely a scenario where this proposed merger does not get through. So we know right now there's going to be about 11.2 billion shares on issue, but who are going to be the largest shareholders of the new merged company, the proposed new merged company? In fact, the three largest shareholders of the new proposed merged company are going to be the Chemist Warehouse Group founders, Mario Verrocci, Jack Gantz, and Sam Gantz. Uh, they are going to be escrowed holders. Mario Verrocci will own 2.6 billion shares or 22.3% of the company. Jack Gantz, 1.6 billion shares or 13.91% of the company. And Sam Gantz, uh, 1.474 billion shares or 12.76%. So combined, they will own 49% of the new proposed merge company. I like this particular slide found on page 16 because it gives us a bit of, bit of a history on Chemist Warehouse Group. In fact, the first Chemist Warehouse store was only open in 2000, 23 years ago. And you'll see why that's really impressive when we look at the next slide, because this uh, Chemist Warehouse Group well, the stores have only been in existence for 23 years. But what I found fascinating about this particular slide is I had no idea Chemist Warehouse Group was expanding overseas. They opened their first international store in New Zealand in 2017-18. They also launched Ultra Beauty that year. They opened their first store in China 2019, their first store in Ireland 2020, and right now they own 54 international stores. Now, ever since I started hearing our rumors that Chemist Warehouse was going or thinking about um, listing on the ASX, I was intrigued mainly because I thought this was a possible, more than likely high quality company on the ASX. And when you look at the growth of Chemist Warehouse from 2000 or since 2004, it is impressive. So in this particular slide, page 17, uh, they show you the network sales and also the network stores on the right. So network sales have increased from 150 million to $7.9 billion. A 10-year CAGR at 14%, five-year CAGR at 10%, and the network stores have grown from 58 to 603. 10-year average new stores per annum, 31. Five-year new stores per annum, 31. So they seem to be opening 31 stores per year, and that should be maintained, you would think, because they are now expanding overseas. The other interesting thing is Chemist Warehouse is just not Chemist Warehouse. So they have 557 Chemist Warehouse stores. They also have 24 pipeline stores. So those are unbranded stores included in Total Network with plans to be converted to Chemist Warehouse stores. They have 21 My Chemist, 17 Ultra Beauty, and one Optometrist Warehouse. 
but they also have six stores in China, six stores in Ireland, and 42 stores in New Zealand. And even though Sigma Healthcare did release the last three years of Chemist Warehouse Group's financial statements, on page 19 of their presentation, we do see some indications of how Chemist Warehouse Group did perform in financial year 23 and a few other facts in regards to their retail networks. For instance, $3.1 billion of statutory revenue, $7.9 billion of total network sales. Now, total network sales includes a combination of the retail networks in store and Coins Warehouse Group's online sales, Australian network sales, and New Zealand network sales um, are not consolidated into Chemist Warehouse Group revenue. $460 million statutory EBIT, 15% EBIT margin, 600 stores across four countries, 12% like-for-like -like sales growth in Australia, uh, and 133 million consumer transactions in financial year 23, and 93 network stores open in the last three years, which again is 31 stores per year. Now, I found this uh, particular slide quite interesting, or intriguing, page 26, because they talk about complementary franchise brands across broad market segments. So they had the big box discount pharmacy, which is Chemist Warehouse, full service pharmacy, which is Amco and My Chemist, and discount pharmacy, which is discount drug stores. So if you look at the network stores in those three uh, sectors, so 503 stores in Australia, 42 stores in New Zealand, six in Ireland and China, 231 Amco stores in Australia, 21 My Chemist stores in Australia, and 109 discount drug stores in Australia. Early in the video, I did a rough calculation of what the valuation of this merged company will be. I said roughly $8 billion. And I was not that far off because on page 30 of this presentation, they have given us the indication of what the proposed merged company will be valued at, $8.8 billion. Now, the numbers they did use, so we need shares and also share price. And they came up with um, shares at completion of the merger of 11.6 billion. I think I use 11.2 billion. And they also use a share price of Sigma's um, last day of trading, which was 76 cents. I use 70 cents. So that's the reason why there was a difference between my 8 billion and this 8.8 billion, as indicated on page 30 of this presentation. Now, I've already mentioned also that it does look like, even though it's not a merger of equals in terms of size of the business and also who are going to be the largest shareholders of this merged company. When you look at the merged company board, there is almost an even split. In fact, five of the new merged company board were, are associated with Sigma Healthcare and four are associated with Chemist Warehouse. So you could actually say it's not a merger of equal when it comes to the new board. It's in favor of Sigma Healthcare. But when you do look at the two most important managers of the new merged company, the CEO and managing director and the CFO, the CEO and managing director, Vikesh Ramzanda, is associated with Sigma Healthcare, while Mark Davis, the proposed new CFO, is associated with Chemist Warehouse Group. He's been in that role since 2020. And previously, he was a CFO of ComputerShare. So just by looking at these two most important managers of the new proposed merged company. It's a 50-50 even split. Now, there were quite a few appendixes within this presentation. I'm going to talk about or we'll go through a couple of these appendixes because appendix B is interesting, supporting information on proposed merger, in particular when it comes to numbers. So impact of the transaction or the merger on key sigma metrics. They have about five, six columns here. The only column I'm interested in is after the proposed merger. Column F, looking at assets, equity interests, uh, securities on issue, EBITDA, EBIT, profit before tax, expenditure, and revenue. Assets, $3.7 billion. Equity interest, $1.265 billion. Total securities on issue, we already know this, 11.6 billion shares. EBITDA, 621. EBIT, about $500 million. Profit before tax, about $450 million. Now, I did have a quick look at the last three financial statements for Chemist Warehouse Group. And some of these numbers actually did go down from financial year 22 to financial year 23. So I don't think that's a one, I do think that's a one-off. I don't expect profit to go down in financial year 24. In fact, I think 
profit will continue to expand quite nicely for this proposed merged company over the next five to 10 years because of expansion around the world. Now, the uh, how much this company will expand financially will be highly dependent on how successful their internet expansion will be. If it's highly successful, I do think there is an argument that this company might be undervalued at $8.8 billion. That's only if I think international expansion is highly successful. If it's not highly successful, I think you probably could argue this uh, valuation, $8.8 billion, is fair valued, possibly even argue that it's overvalued. In page 43 of the presentation, appendix B again, impact of the transactions on Sigma's capital structure. We already know this. 11.55 billion shares on issue. That's a lot of shares on issue. And 49% of those shares are owned by the co-founders of Chemist Warehouse Group. Appendix C is further details on Chemist Warehouse Group. I'm not going to go through this in many detail. Uh, it is interesting if you want more information on Chemist Warehouse Group. Uh, if you don't have enough information, for instance, they go through the growth in retail network, stores growth in Victoria, or all the states, also New Zealand. You can see New Zealand's been growing nicely from 14 stores to 42 stores. China's grown from one store to six stores. Ireland's grown two stores per year over the last three years. And they go into further details in regards to Chemist Warehouse store format and product strategy, extensive product offering, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm not really going to go into any more detail in regards to Chemist Warehouse Group. So if you are interested in Chemist Warehouse Group and this particular merger, I definitely would go through this investor presentation. The last thing I want to go through in this particular video is looking at the key risks. Now, I don't always look at key risk when I'm evaluating an investment or potential investment. And that is one thing I probably should do because sometimes when I actually do go through key risk, one will pop up that I would never thought of. And you go, wow, that is a pretty big key risk. Maybe this investment is not for me. But sometimes you also have to understand that there is going to be a lot of risk out there because we are talking about the future. So you shouldn't uh, dismiss a potential investment just because there is one key risk in there that you haven't thought of and it dissuades you from making that investment. Because if that happens, there is a possibility you will never make an investment in the future if you just focus on the key risk. But I think it's still good to have a look at the key risk. Now, when it comes to the first key risk, this um, they mentioned in this presentation, it is, in my opinion, the number one key risk. Operating in a regulated environment, regulatory reform, and other legislative changes. This, in my opinion, is the biggest risk when it comes to not only this proposed merged company, but also to Sigma Warehouse and Chemist Warehouse. But both of these companies have performed quite well over the past, well, maybe not both, but Chemist Warehouse definitely have performed quite well over the past 20 years with this risk in play. But we just don't know what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years because there's always talk about regular changes, regulatory changes in this industry. Now let's have a look at some of the other risks. Way less on the risk profile, in my opinion, is changes to competitive landscape and operating performance of retail pharmacies. The reason I think this is less of a risk is because of how well Chemist Warehouse have performed over the last 20 years. I think they are the key risk to some of their competitors. Uh, and I think they've shown that over the last 20 years. Uh, inadequate or poor inventory management. You could say that for a lot of retail companies. Impact of the need of community pharmacy customers to obtain approvals from state pharmacy regulators. That's one risk I have not thought of. So I might actually go through that particular risk summary. Impact of Australia's pharmacy ownership laws and stakeholder activism. Uh, that can be a risk, particularly that stakeholder. Well, it's always a risk. Not It is a risk, but it's always a risk for companies, stakeholder act activism, but it's not, in my opinion, a key risk. Well, not a major key risk for this proposed merged company. Uh, Chemist Warehouse Group is currently working to determine an acceptable form of franchise agreement for use in New South Wales, which will support approvals by the New South Wales Pharmacy Regulator. regulator. 
Sometimes I just can't say words. Uh, so that's definitely not a risk I have thought about. And again, I should go through that key risk. Inadequate, that key risk summary, I should say, inadequate or poor liquidity management or failure to raise funding when required. Eh, I'm not concerned about that. Loss of material customer or customer group or customer fold. That's not sort of, uh, that's sort of like it was a key risk for Sigma Healthcare because Chemist Warehouse Group was one of their material customers. They lost that customer, was it five or six years ago? And then they regained that customer uh, about six months ago while EBOS lost that customer. So I'm not sure if that is now a significant risk for this merge company. I could be wrong. So I should go through the summary for that. Inability to acquire products at competitive prices and exposure to third-party supply chain vulnerabilities. Yeah, that's always a key risk. Occupational health and safety incidents or breaches. Don't care about that at all. It's a key risk for every company in the world. Impact of adverse economic conditions, negative consumer sentiment, or unfavorable market and consumer trends. And again, that's a key risk for every company in the world, not just for uh, this uh, new proposed merge company, failure to achieve expected growth in store rollouts. That's an interesting key risk. So we already know that this um, well, Chemist Warehouse Group has um, been rolling out 31 new stores per year. Will that slow down? And if that does slow down or their success in rolling out stores overseas is not that good, yeah, that is a key risk. Inadequate IT infrastructure and systems, yeah, that's a key risk for many companies around the world. Cyber risk, that's a risk for all companies around the world. Loss of critical infrastructure, risk inherent in franchise arrangements, including protections under franchising laws in Australian international pharmacy ownership laws. So again, that's sort of regulatory or falls in the regulatory um, part of the equation. Attracting and retaining key talent. Now, I would say that's a major key risk if uh, those, uh, the three major larger shareholders or the co-founders of Chemist Warehouse Group did own 49% of the company, but I think we're pretty safe on that. Otherwise, attracting and retaining key talent, oh, that's a bit iffy when it comes to this merged company. Risk associated with related parties, I'm not sure what they're talking about here, but I'm sure you can read the summary. Delivery of strategic initiatives, projects, and acquisitions, that's a key risk for all companies around the world. So as you can see, a lot of these key risks are applicable for most companies in the world. Changes in consumer perception and consumer confidence, again, yeah, it's for all companies. Exposure to litigation claims and disputes, force majeure events, that's for all companies. Exposure to changes in tax rules and their interpretation, that's again, sort of in the regulatory uh, government sort of uh, area. And it goes on and on. Underwriting risk, share price and liquidity, Completion risks. Okay, this is, yeah, this is about, there's a possibility this merger doesn't go through. Completion of the proposed merger is conditional on various matters, including obtaining regulatory approval. So again, regulatory approval. Strip component of merger consideration. You're not sure what that's about. Uh, reliance on information provided. It keeps on going on and on. But in my opinion, historical liabilities of Chemist Warehouse Group, analysis of merger opportunity, just keeps on going. Funding. Increased leverage of Sigma as a result of the proposed merger, uh, foreign exchange risk and foreign regulation. So a lot of these risks are sort of applicable for every company in the world, international offer restrictions. So I'm going to end the video right there. So the main risk is that first one. That, in my opinion, is the main risk. And that is a risk that is applicable to Chemist Warehouse Group, applicable to Sigma Healthcare, operating in a regulated environment. We just don't know... Uh, we don't know what might what a new government or even the current government might do in this space that could materially affect the financial performance of the merge company or even just Chemist Warehouse Group in Sigma Healthcare. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you have any questions about this particular merger, Chemist Warehouse Group, uh, Sigma Healthcare, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. For financial needs, that's it for the video. Have a good day. Bye.